What's going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and today we're going to be talking about emulating our software from a PLC an RS Logix 500 onto an emulator 500 on the computer. So the goal of this software is essentially to take your program and test it without having the actual hardware. And a lot of problems that, um, you know, a lot of students and kind of those who want to get into PLCs experience is that the hardware is actually extremely expensive. However, you can get the software running, depending on where you get it, relatively cheap, and then you can start testing your own programs playing with the instructions and kind of learning more and more uh, within your own computer environment. So you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on Alan Bradley software. Now for this particular tutorial, you're going to need three different softwares. So of course, there's going to, going to be the RS Logix 500. You're also going to need RS Lynx, which typically comes with it. And then you're going to need to download this. Uh, it's a free version, which is essentially RS Logix Emulate 500, which will allow us to run that test environment on our machine. So what I'm going to start with first is I'm going to go into RS Logix 500. I'm going to create a new program, so file new. Here I'm going to select the PLC and I'm going to go with the uh, PLC which I possess in terms of hardware so I know how, to, how it works. I'm going to hit on OK and in case you're wondering that's a Micrologix 1100 series. And we're going to create very simple logic, which is actually based on a question that, rece that was received on one of the PLC forums that I uh, frequently follow. And essentially that logic is going to allow us to activate an output for five minutes and then wait 55 minutes and then uh, essentially the cycle continues. So it's uh, an application to steer a certain substance within a tank. Now this application can be written in many different ways. So my way is going to be, I guess, the one I show you, but you can certainly use different ways uh, to program this. So I'm going to use a single timer, which is going to be a time base one. And I'm going to take that timer out of this T4. So T4 is going to be our timer. I'm going to select this, copy, and then paste that into our timer. And so remember, we want to uh, count 60 uh, minutes essentially. So in terms of seconds, so one minute is going to be 60 and multiplying that by 360 is going to be 3600. So that gives us a total running time of that timer of uh, 60 minutes. Now at the, uh, like I was saying at the beginning of the timer from zero to five minutes, I want to enable a certain output. So I'm going to put in a limit instruction, change instruction type. LIM is going to be the key and I'm going to test. So the low limit is going to be zero. The high limit, the high limit is going to be five minutes. And now, so 60 would be a single minute in terms of seconds. And uh, for five minutes, we're going to put that at 300. And so between zero um, and 300 uh, seconds, we want to turn on an output. So we're going to just take the first output for demonstration purposes. And this is going to be stir VFD on. So that's going to be our device, which is connected on a VFD. And we're going to copy this particular bit, put that in our test, put that in our test. So output zero, zero is going to be, sorry, this is not going to be our test. I did make a mistake. So the output is going to go here. Let's remove that and put that in as here. So the stir VFD on is going to be an enable bit. The test we're going to do is on the timer for zero dot accumulated. So the accumulated bit essentially, or the accumulated register of a timer um, is going to be what actually does the counting. So here we have until where it needs to count and then it starts at zero and goes to uh, 3,600 seconds essentially. So between zero and 300 seconds is when we want to uh, look at that value and turn on this stir VFD. Now, uh, at this point, this is going to definitely work. But what's going to happen is since here we have no additional information on this timer, it's only going to reach 60 uh, minutes and then stop there. So we need to have a way of resetting that timer. And do remember that if we go into our timer, there's going to be a done bit, which is essentially the timer slash done, we can control that, then put an XIC instruction, put an XIC instruction. And then when the timer is done, we need to reset the timer. So we're going to create this OT change instruction type, make that a reset. And here we're going to copy paste one of our timers. And this should be pretty much all of our logic. So we're going to verify this program. And so now just uh, uh, 
before we get into the simulation, so we do need to save this file, file save. We're going to go into projects, scroll down, personal PLC. We're going to put this into project one and it's going to be called simulation. Let's put that simulation two since I've already done a one. We're going to save this in. Now let's configure our drivers. So now RS Lynx, in case you're not aware of it, uh, is a software which allows to create uh, network links between your machine and a PLC and sometimes between an HMI screen and a PLC. So essentially what we need to do is create a driver which will uh, virtually allow us to go from our RS Logix environment to our simulator. So what I'm going to do is go into communications, configure drivers, and here you will see the same set of drivers as I had in the background. But essentially we need to create a new one, which is going to be this SLC 500 emulator driver. So this is a specific driver, which you would not use for anything else except for your emulator. I'm going to hit add new, and this is going to give it a generic name, which is fine. Click on okay. And a station number. So the station number refers to the, um, to the PLC itself. And we're going to just leave it at zero. Hit on okay. We can close this out. And we're going to go to our emulator. So a pretty uneventful screen at first, but we will open our software. So if you remember, I saved it here and the name is simulation two. Let's open that up. It will take a second to load. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. So station. So this is going to be in station one in terms of simulation one on this environment. And so now we need to hit this run button, which is essentially allowing the computer to run the software in the background while we can connect from RS Logix. So let's go into RS Logix. And here we will have to download this program into that environment, although it's a little bit obscure to me why it doesn't um, just kind of since you're loading the program, why it doesn't take it. But so once we go here and we select our driver, which is EMU 500-1, as you remember, that was the generic name given it, given to it by uh, RS Logix. We will see this 01 station and we can download the program into it. And so we're going to hit OK. This is going to give us a few warnings, which are boilerplate things that you would get on a PLC as well. Let's just wait a couple of moments here before it loads. And let's double check. So everything, everything is running here. So we should be able to download into this environment shortly. All right. So after reloading the software, it actually allowed me to go online. So we don't want to proceed with the download. We do want to replace the project settings and we want to go online. So now we're going to switch our controller to run mode. Yes, we do want to agree. And so at this point, we're going to see the timer increment just like we would expect. And as you can see, the stir is currently on. So it's going to be on for five minutes, then it's going to turn off for 55 minutes. And of course, come back on in a cycle. However, this is a little bit, um, this is going to be a, a little bit long to test. So what I'm going to do is go offline with this program. I do want to save changes, hit OK. Yes, we're going to take the values. So we're back offline. And now we can essentially, I'm going to change this by a factor of uh, 100. So instead of waiting for uh, five minutes, we're going to wait for 36 seconds. And here we're going to wait for three seconds, and then it's going to come back on, I'm going to verify my project, everything should be good comms, system comms, I'm going to select the same PLC, I'm going to hit download, hit OK proceed with all the settings and we're going to go back into run mode. Yes. And so now we can test this a lot quicker. So for three seconds, the stir is on, then it's going to be off and it's going to repeat uh, this cycle again once it reaches back to zero. And of course we can, we can, I don't know if we can change this alive. Let's try that. Okay, so we do can we can change the accumulated value live on the PLC. So at 36, it should be done and it should reset back to zero. So for three seconds, again, the stir is going to be on so on and so forth. So just to demonstrate that this environment is completely running on the computer itself, there's absolutely no hardware involved. And you can test all your programs within this uh, RS Logix emulate 500 environment. So if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below. If you want to see anything uh, different or any 
particular sh sections on PLCs, do let me know there as well. See you next time. Take care.